Hello, my name is Derek Kinder. I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the different types of input data necessary for an RMC RFA project. There are four types of input data required for an RMC RFA project. This includes discharge gauge data, stage gauge data, inflow hydrographs, and a volume frequency curve. The objective of this lecture is to understand how each of these input data fit into the framework of RMC RFA, as well as demonstrate how to input the data into the model. Before we get into any data entry, Remember to always check your data. Raw data investigation is the most important step in any dam safety analysis. Many data sets have numerous occurrences of missing data, faulty data, or other issues that can impact analysis. The quality of the data that is analyzed will make the largest impact on the quality of results obtained from any computer program. In addition, know what data records are available and how and when any operational changes have been executed. If analysis relies on a period of record, the entire data set used needs to be homogeneous and not from a mixed population. Here's an example of a daily stage gauge data set that has some issues. It is important to identify and understand changes in vertical datum, upstream regulation, operation of the dam, man-made changes in the watershed, measurement errors, missing data, pool restrictions, etc. A consistent and representative data set is needed for the RFA analysis. Correct any data errors beforehand and consider excluding or adjusting data that is not representative of the conditions being evaluated in the risk assessment. Data that doesn't need to be adjusted includes natural variability, like record flood events or droughts. However, still check these records against other data sources, such as post-flood reports. Do the peak pool elevations match for the events of record? If not, why are they different? Engineering judgment is often required when selecting data for the analysis. The first set of data required to perform a simulation is a record of the daily inflows at the dam. The entire period of record should be used when available and appropriate. This data should be a continuous record. Discharge gauge data is used for computing flood seasonality and empirical frequency curves, which will be discussed in a later presentation. The first step to input a discharge gauge is to enter a name and description. The second step is to enter the time window of the data. Remember that the data must be continuous. There can be no gaps or missing data. The user has the option to calculate missing data values by interpolation by right-clicking anywhere within the input data table. Note that when you create a new discharge gauge, the time step option is set to one day and cannot be changed. This is because the discharge gauge and stage gauge require a mandatory one day time step. Once you have filled out the start and end date, hit the resize table button. Next, the input data table will populate with ordinance, dates, and times. You can manually enter or paste in the flows for the data set. Once the data is input, a plot will be generated. Be sure to check your plot for errors. Are there any high or low spots that indicate incorrect data points? Is there a gap in the data set that needs to be adjusted for? The discharge gauge data will be used in later in the analysis to estimate the time of year that floods occur by month. The procedure for entering a stage gauge is the same as the discharge gauge, with the only exception being the user enters daily stages instead of daily inflows. As with the discharge gauge, the stage gauge should be the period of record that is representative of current operating procedures. Stage gauge data must be a continuous record with no data gaps. The user can have software interpolate missing values by right-clicking anywhere within the input data table. This stage gauge data will be used later in the analysis to develop monthly stage duration curves and an annual empirical stage frequency curve. The shape of the hydrograph reflects the response of the watershed to an event. Multiple inflow hydrographs should be used to account for uncertainty in the simulation. 
The inflow hydrograph shapes are scaled up or down based on the sampled inflow volume of a flood event in the stochastic simulation. The inflow hydrograph should be representative of the critical duration. For example, if a three-day duration is selected as the critical duration, the inflow hydrographs will be scaled based on the three-day volume. Inflow hydrographs can be based on observed flood events, reconstructed historical events, synthetic flood events such as probable maximum flood, standard project flood, or precipitation frequency-based flood. For this type of analysis, the inflow hydrograph should be unregulated. When selecting inflow hydrographs, consider flood generating mechanisms for extreme floods in the watershed. Smaller watersheds dominated by intense thunderstorm events will typically have a relatively short duration on the order of a few days, whereas larger watersheds dominated by snowmelt driven floods can typically have longer durations on the order of weeks. Here are a few of the potential data sources to search for inflow hydrograph data. Information can often be found in water control manuals, water management databases, project reports, post-flood reports, USGS data repositories, and USGS water supply papers. Entering the inflow hydrograph into the program is like the discharge and stage gauge entry. You must first give the inflow hydrograph a name and set the time window for the hydrograph. Note for inflow hydrographs, you can select a range of time steps for the input values. Then click resize table to get the ordinates for the inflow hydrograph. You can then copy and paste the flow values from the inflow hydrograph and the plot will automatically update. Multiple inflow hydrograph shapes should be entered for an RMC RFA simulation. The inputs to the volume frequency curve come from a best fit volume frequency analysis for the critical duration. You start just like all other data inputs with a name and description for the volume frequency curve. Then you need to select the distribution type and enter the parameters for the volume frequency curve. Notice there is a drop down with several probability distribution options. The parameters needed for a log Pearson type 3 probability distribution are the mean, the standard deviation, the skew, the effective record length, and the critical duration. Once these parameters have been input, the user must click Compute before running a simulation to calculate the median and the upper and lower 90% uncertainty bounds for the frequency curve. The plot is automatically updated. Be sure to compare the computed curve with the prior best fit frequency curve analysis.